Good morning, Prince of Peace. Good morning, family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is indeed a beautiful, sunny day on this third Sunday of Lent. Uh, Vicar Kayla Hopgood is our preacher today, and Vicar Kayla will be preaching both from the First Corinthians lesson and the Gospel of John, the second chapter where Jesus turns over the money changers' tables in the temple. But first we begin with our confession and forgiveness. God's grace is given to each of us, freely, unconditionally, always, confident in God's promised mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of mercy, we confess that we are broken vessels in need of your grace. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, mend and restore us so that we may be freed from our sin and reconciled to you. To serve one another with the gladness of heart. Amen. Cling to this promise. God's grace for you overflows. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. Today's first reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus, our economic driven culture is cast aside, and we are ushered into a new paradigm of relationship with God and with one another. Today's gospel reading can sound almost simple to our ears. Of course it would be blasphemous to have sellers scamming you with ridiculously high prices for goods in the house of the Lord. But for those who are traveling to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, this wasn't as far-fetched as it might sound. They were Jews who lived righteously, studied their Torah, and loved the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, and mind. And they dropped everything to travel to Jerusalem and worship God in the temple on this high, holy day. And these travelers probably didn't take their sacrificial offerings with them. That would have been too much of a burden to bear probably while walking, perhaps by foot or by donkey, to Jerusalem. You'd take what would make the difficult trip easier. And after reaching Jerusalem and gazing upon the splendor and majesty of the temple, a sacrificial offering would then be considered. How convenient it must have been that the cattle, the sheep, and the doves were right there right in the temple to purchase for your worship. This was a system that was so ingrained into the worship practices of the people that it didn't seem odd at all. And what could be so weird about an exchange of goods to justify our value? This is, after all, the ideology in which our world is built. Economic relationships give us a way of understanding the world around us. You see, with something as tangible as numbers, we can calculate our society. We can measure success. We can tell the importance of ourselves and of one another by the number of dollars in our bank account. That five-digit zip code can predetermine a baby's value in society well before that child even speaks. We know this way kills us. We know that when we view exchanges this way, it turns people into things. 
but we simply cannot imagine another way. When we see ourselves with those in the temple, we start to see how their world is our world. And we see how the actions of Jesus are totally outrageous and disruptive to human wisdom, to the economic relationships at play. In our society, Jesus would be locked up right there for his disobedience in the temple. And yet, what Jesus does here is he unlocks us from our chains of economic worth and value. In one swift scene, Jesus shows us his liberating power, and it certainly doesn't come the way our world wants. By driving out the money changers and freeing the animals, he frees us to see our faith not as a transaction or an obligation, but as a relationship with the almighty and powerful God. All of this through the body of Jesus, through the rejected stone which becomes our new way of life. This was a way that proclaimed no sacred cows, no sacred geography or buildings, no extra points for becoming an ordained minister. No, all is saved not by our own doing, but by Jesus. And his sacrificial love proclaimed to us in his crucifixion, his powerful dominion displayed to us in his bodily resurrection. All has been recovered and made holy in the body of Jesus. And Jesus did this for no benefit for himself. This was an entirely sacrificial and free gift. And this, this right here is what makes Jesus so scandalous. In Jesus, the power we think we have to control the world is reordered. We realize we don't have much power at all, but instead are given a love that empowers us to love others, not by the world's standards, but by God's. To see each human made in the image of God who created us and saved us. How we embody this love is our witness to the world. How this love lives is the church. My first job out of college was working for a large church in Cambridge, Massachusetts in their community building ministry. The church shared a block with two affordable housing complexes, and each of these properties housed hundreds of neighbors that had either recently come from or were one generation fresh to the United States. Many were from Ethiopia, Somalia, Pakistan, and Sudan, countries in the Middle East and North Africa. And my task was simple. Get to know your neighbors. There was no hidden agenda. I wasn't there to proselytize or to get them to sign some petition. I genuinely was assigned the task to listen to them, to build trust, and to understand how we could love and see one another. It sounds pretty beautiful, doesn't it? And in many ways, it was. I had endless meals with injera and curries and the most delicious teas and spices at the homes of our neighbors. I'd sit and talk with them, and we'd share our life together. And there are many stories I could tell you about this time of ministry. But perhaps the most profound was where I struggled. I had just finished my formal education, and for the first time in my adult life, I, I was just so used to getting feedback receiving grades, and being told how to improve at the task in front of me. But in these relationships, none of that mattered. I had no sense of measuring my effectiveness, other than to continue showing up to be with my neighbors at the park, over tea, in the community room. And as a young, academically driven person, this was entirely unnerving to me. 
How was I to know if I was successful? Where was I to put my worth and value? I did not understand how to operate without metrics of success. I had lived and breathed them for so long. And yet here I was, invited to live out my witness as part of the body of Christ. To live the foolishness of the cross that sees love in the form of presence and listening and being a true neighbor as a new way of being in the world. I learned then, as I continue to learn every day, that by securing myself to the metrics of this world, I was set up to lose. But to put my hope on the risen Christ, I could find true meaning and purpose. And so I am here today to confess to you that your vicar, Kayla Hopgood, holds the tension of desiring to be successful while also acknowledging that this simply cannot be my purpose in life. This cannot be where I derive meaning. Jesus is the ultimate success. Jesus is the one who made it by giving up his very life for you and for me. And this set into motion a new kind of relationship with ourselves and with one another. No longer are we chained to the metrics of our world. We are liberated in Christ as a child of God. This, of course, does not mean that you should not try your best at whatever task is in front of you. But it does mean that you're freed. You are free to do whatever you do. Knowing this love will not abandon you when the going gets tough when the world measures you differently than what has been claimed, what you have been claimed as worthy by God. In Jesus' body, love has been given. In him, we arise to new life every day. In the cross, God's weakness, there lies the power. There lies the hope, and there lies our true meaning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
season of Lent, we confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world. Therefore, let us be bold as we pray trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. God of the covenant, in the glory of the cross, your Son embraced the power of death and broke its hold over your people. In this time of repentance, draw all people to yourself, that we who confess Jesus as Lord may put aside the deeds of death and accept the life of your kingdom. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, the mystery in which we dwell into our scarcity, your abundance flows. Enliven all communities with your good news. Guide us to love and serve Jesus giving ourselves away for the sake of the world, for this word of life, God of mercy. Even during this pandemic, connect us in diverse ways to our worshiping communities and give to all persons regular rest from their work, God of mercy. Keep the nations of the earth from engaging in war bloodshed and torture, and help people of all ages to resist the lure of violence, God of mercy. Train the diverse peoples of our nation to respect one another. As you blessed Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, so bless all who work to end discrimination and the oppression of the vulnerable, God of mercy. Use our bounty to meet the needs of others, those who are homeless or hungry, and hear our prayers for all who are sick or suffering, especially all afflicted with the coronavirus, and all we name here before you. Kathy, Bob, Ellie, Liz, Peter, Millie, the D'Alessandro family, the Wynn family, Lois, Nick, Maureen, John, James, Teresa, Krista, Sherry, Keith, Holly, and all who we name before you now. God of mercy, the cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved, 
Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. We name this day Renee Carroll, Marie Jordan, and all the saints of our lives. God of mercy, God of all compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant to us what you know we need, that we may walk in the life and peace of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation. Amen. In Christ we meet the God, whoops, let me go to the peace, the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend God's peace this day. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. During these days of virtual worship, we remember the sacrament and we pray this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship again. As uh, we are concluding this virtual service, I think the Durys are here to light a fire out in the outdoor chapel. We are back to in-person worship, uh, but not indoors, not indoors. Um, you know, we're, we're, moving, we're moving there, but we're, we're not there yet to, to gather inside uh, safely. Uh, we were talking, Doug and I, uh, as uh, the service began, it was one year ago. I remember on this particular Sunday, Dale and I had traveled out to Ohio and we were driving home. And on that Monday, everything hit. And so it's been one year, and I want the congregation to know that I am itching 
to get back. Doug is itching to get back. All of us are, are itching to, to get back. Tim, our, our medical doctor, gives a thumb up. And we are working, our, our task force met this past week, and we are talking about coming together uh, in person, indoors, so we don't have to worry about whether it's going to rain or whether it's windy or whether it's 32 degrees out. Um, but we're still not there yet. And uh, hopefully as vaccinations become more and more <coughs> inside of all of us, uh, we, will, we will get there soon. So, so just stay, stay patient. And I think, uh, you know, uh, not before Easter and not even on Easter. I want to say that. Uh, but looking after Easter, as we get uh, through April and, and into May, I, I really trust that we, will be, that we will be back. But in the meantime, on a beautiful day, you can come outside and the sacrament will be uh, celebrated. And that's how we're going to proceed. And Holy Week, we're going to have uh, a combination of this service, the online virtual service, uh, but then uh, many, in fact, every day of, well, not every day of Holy Week, but uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and of course, going back to Palm Sunday, there will be outdoor events planned each of those days. So I do want to uh, share that with the congregation. For this week, uh, I will be continuing, if you're, if you're going to stay home and uh, 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 want to join our, our conversation about Howard Thurman's book, Jesus and the Disinherited, I will be teaching that at 11 o'clock. Uh, moving into this week, kind of the typical Lenten uh, schedule or calendar with the uh, uh, Holden Prayer midweek worship on uh, Wednesday night, I think Vicar Kayla is, is preaching or sharing the meditation uh, for, for that uh, service. Confirmation class, please note that the Crossroads Retreat is this coming Saturday. Please register on the Crossroads uh, uh, website for, for that retreat. I think... That is all, Doug. Anything from you? Um, okay, let us uh, let us conclude with the benediction this day. Strengthened by God's mercy, do not lose heart. Proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and yourselves as servants for Christ's sake. Let light shine out of darkness, so that the life of Jesus might be made visible in you. And may the treasured hope of God sustain you and keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.